So, cool. let me think back. Last time, we uh, set a big manse on fire. Ah! Iron Iron Manse on fire. <laughs> we uh, cleared it out of some uh, Cult of Talos um, orcs. But then and there they was had a gigantic, this... and there was a gigantic blood tree in the middle of it, and we're like, "This thing can't keep living." And, and... Uh, Barrican set it ablaze in a magnificent fireball. And we all just and we all ran for the hills. <laughs> yep. Maybe went back to Falcon, a Falcon's Lodge. He rewarded you with a uh, with boots. Uh, of a uh, el- boots of elven kind, we they're called, which gives you advantages on stealth checks. And I think we decided Maruk will be getting that. Hooray! I will. I will be a giant, stealthy elephant man. And and you don't have footsteps or something. Like you don't make any noise walking. I don't know if that's like a flavor to how you get your advantage, but that's what um, it says. Chris, we're hearing some feedback in your end. Oh, uh, he's in the kitchen. Hey, Chris Bo. Yeah. You gotta do. I don't. They said something about feedback in the right. volume. Oh, that'd be me then. Hold on. Make no sound, regardless of the surface. So basically, it makes no sound, but they can still see you. Potentially. Right. Yeah. So that'd be perfect have... when you're sneaking downstairs into the uh, tavern for a midnight snack. <laughs> <laughs> but the time has come to say goodbye to Falcon's Hunting Lodge. You had some good fun there. But morning comes, you all had a long rest, and um, you make your way to whatever destination you see fit. To next. How's the feedback? Is it better? Uh, we'll see. I think it's better. Well, we still need to go. Don't we still need to go to that? Uh, Was it Connieberry? Yes, we must meet Factory there. See what the deal is with this giant robot mecha work thing that Golem. I don't. It's giant. It's man-made, and it's meant for death. If the legends are true, it'll be a sight we will never forget. It'll be the second largest thing we've ever seen. It's the first. Yet to be seen. (laughs) Made it. (laughs) So. It's actually not too bad. To get to Connie Berry. But it will be approaching um, late evening when you get there. Do we know, is, is Connie Berry a, a full town? Or is it... So, it was abandoned. Connie Berry is a uh, town that was uh, ransacked by barbarians um, about 100 years ago. Gotcha. Okay. And the town's been abandoned, obviously. Um, and we found out that the Warforge that were here several centuries ago had buried a uh, malfunctioning um, mm-hmm. weapon beneath what would become Connieberry. Yep, gotcha. And you enticed the Rock Gnome Factory about um, the possibilities of piloting a giant war mech. She liked that idea. I mean, who wouldn't? I, you know the old phrase, "Six dig giant robots." That is an old phrase. So, you had told her about it about a day or two ago, um, but you have no way of knowing what their status is. So, just so you know that. No. No, there's no way to know, but go. Let's go. I'm down. Feet activated. (laughs) 
These boots are apparently made from walking. So you reach Connieberry late evening, and you're uh, glad to see that you are met with not only factory, but also Big Fellow's old captain, which you call Captain, and uh, about a, a gang of about a dozen dwarfs. Huh. Some of them you recognize from the dwarves you rescued from the uh, Mountain Toe Mine. Um, but two of them you, rec- you recognize as the uh, two dwarfs you met at the um, excavation camp. One of your very first adventures. Mm-hmm. And they recognize you, like, immediately. Give you a hearty welcome. Their name was Dazlin and Norvis. Friends, been a while. And they Good give to you see a, your good spirits. Give you a hearty handshake and uh, big old dwarven hugs. That's nice. Goes, ah, y'all seem stronger since the last time we met. By three or four levels. It's an odd thing to say, but <laughs> I believe it. It's a robot thing to say. Um, the, young, the, the, the young rock gnome here has uh, told us about the the Warforged machine under Connieberry, and we just couldn't resist. And plus, you're going to need a way to excavate it. How does excavation better than drawers? But, um... We uh, don't exactly know where to start looking. Well, that, I believe that would be Big Fellow and Captain's yes. purview. All right. and I turn I turn over to Captain, and I say, Do your schematics in your head still remember the location of the burial ground? The, um, <laughs> the Captain kind of scans with his eyes. The, the, uh, the ruined town, and he goes, well, my memory isn't what it used to be. Quite literally. But, when I remember, uh, when my head approached the, the, the burial site of all the warforged in the ocean, my sensors began to activate. I'm sure it'll do the same thing here. Will mine activate as well? If uh, we could, sp- we could cover more ground if we split up. Indeed. We so shall go with teams of two. We shall lead the way, like Rudolph on that Christmas day. <laughs> Says I, yes, old faithful Rudolph. <laughs> Everybody else he, led the entire platoon. he, uh, he led the entire platoon of Warforged with his. Glowing nose in the <laughs> fogs of that faithful day. In time, we hope his story will be honored in some sort of kitschy memorabilia. But alas, it hasn't. Is Big Fellow brought to life magically? Or... It was the hat and the uh, the, silk, <laughs> the magic hat. <laughs> Yeah. The whole top hat they found. <laughs> yeah. Like, this version of the, the Warforge, I think we're playing a little bit more like machines. Okay. But um, within the Eberron setting, they were um, given, like, magic souls. So they're, like, more or less, they're actual people. Okay. But they inhabit um, construct bodies. Like Johnny Five. Yes. Would it... Well... No, I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and... Well, how long does this last? About <laughs> ten minutes. Eh, never mind. Well, yeah, I'm going to cast Detect Magic just to have that active while we kind of 
are walking around town to see if I can sense anything. I know that it's been deactivated, but if that, um, if, you do you do know that I could do that without you expending a spell slot. It's okay. I got no spell slots. We're we're high levels, and I I don't use spell slots very much, anyways. So Ruth, you 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 uh use your nose as a, a dowsing rod <laughs> and try to sniff out some magic <laughs> anywhere. And um, I want who's ever searching to give me an investigation check. Um, wait, I think I get it. I think I might get an advantage on this. And you know what? Also, Joey, if I am... Mm -hmm. So, so as far as we know, we, we believe that it's buried under a clay berry, right? That's the, the rumor? Yes, it's definitely buried. So, in that case, would I be able to sense disturbances in the, the natural order of the ground? Oh, um, if it was like a radar... Okay. Yeah, you would you would think that it would bounce off its body. Okay. So as as a druid in touch with nature, maybe maybe a nature check instead of investigation is what I'm pushing for. Okay. Well, I rolled a natural one on it. So thank you for allowing me that. <laughs> You're just looking at this house. <laughs> yeah. Like perhaps think... maybe this is the robot. Guys, it's over here. <laughs> Guys, I found it. Look. I present to you the Colossus of Conneberry. It is a great house, but a Colossus it is not. Are you sure? So with uh, an 18 and 20, I will say, um, big fellow, like your, your robotic senses are like linking to some sort of Wi-Fi. Um... In Baruch, you're able to sense a very obvious magical presence, and you're, um, which just makes you to, which just takes you to a nondescript ruined building, um, near the center of the town. Is it close to where Zizix thought the building, uh, the, the thing was? <laughs> Completely opposite side. <laughs> like, Except the first house not... he looked at, it was like, well, this is obviously it. <laughs> I need to search further, I've got it. I mean, this house has two chimneys. Those are obviously the, the legs. So, Mr. Big Wigfell, I think... I think the giant magic thing that I'm sensing under this house might be it. What do you think? I think you're right, Elephant Man. Yeah, the captain go. agrees with you. He goes, and this... My friends, is where our dilemma comes in. If we leave the construct undisturbed, then it's likely to be undisturbed for another 300 years until its power supply finally runs out. But. But. Yeah. But. It is possible <laughs> we could repair the construct like Young Factory wants to and it will be a valuable protector for Fandolin. <coughs> she humored us with ideas of taking up so uh, Ice Fire Peak to fight a dragon but I don't think it will be suited to the narrow ledges in extreme cold. Point there. Which means we have to bring the dragon to us. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna want to come here. I don't think it, there's anything here that interests it. I should update you on the situation in Fandolin. Uh oh. Oh, that sounds like that sounds like bad news. Depends on how you look at it. The commanders of the Reavers still haven't returned, and with the rains. Uh, now dis uh, dispersed, the Reavers have started acting more like thugs to the local community, especially since you've been gone for oh. several days. So you're thinking maybe if there was a giant robot in town saying, hey, don't do that. 
they wouldn't be they'd be disinclined to act like you know that would be a excellent deterrent well it is worrying that the leaders have not been in Fandolin in well over a week it's my it's my conclusion it's my conclusion that what Big Fellow told me about their maps of the Sword Mountains, that they too are searching for Ice Spire Keep. Oh. Which right. I understand you know a vague location of. I'm pretty sure we know, pretty sure we could find it faster than them. But they, but if you're right, they've had a few head day starts, so they might be on their way there, or there, they might be there already. And they have advantage of, they don't know what general location the keep is located at. No. From my understanding, Cryovane has not been seen for several days. So he's probably, he's probably at the, he's probably resting at Icefire Peak as we speak. You should take one, of the dwarves, one of the dwarves walk up and um, he goes, well, I've uh, got some good news and I've uh, got some bad news, but it could be good news depending on how you look at it. Well, uh, let's start with the bad news. That's always a good way to go about and it. The bad news is, is it wasn't obvious. We're going to have to dig and we're going to have to demolish this house. Which is also good news, because I love when things explode. <laughs> well, can, uh, we, I point in the direction of the giant fire and go, I think you know our position on destroying things. Yeah, you see a big plume of smoke. <laughs> it's just burning a few miles away. He goes, ah, that's your doing, eh? Burn, baby, burn. There was, a, burn there was, a, there was a giant vampire-like tree. Fire was the only solution. Well, that just sounds like nonsense to me, but... You do you. Now, I know that dwarves are known to be the best at digging and all that crap. But we don't know how far down. Maybe a vague estimate. We don't know how long it's going to take to dig this thing up. So, I'm afraid if you hang around here, you'll just be hanging around for God's know how long. Thus giving the readers more of a head start. Then off to Dry Spire Peak we go. Um, maybe we, we, we might want to return to Fanwood beforehand. Maybe rest up. Gather some supplies. You know. Factory. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm just thinking, this. We're about to go after a giant dragon. Not only that, a giant cold dragon. A giant white dragon. So. Maybe we need to. Maybe pick up some. Maybe we need to get some supplies, specifically ones that deal with, you know. Cold resistance or something like that. I don't know. Just, just I am. I am so down for hunting down the dragon. I think at this point, I would agree that if that is our goal, I would definitely like to possibly uh, uh, prepare some different spells. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm I'm in agreement. With um, our friend, our our, our our pachyderm friend here. Oh, the little gnome factory does uh, speak up. He goes, um, "This thing has been buried underneath the earth for at least three hundred years. Um, I may need some replacement parts, or just some basic things like." iron rods and gears 
to get this thing running again. And um, luckily, I know a place that has all of those things. Go on. And it just so happens I took a look at that uh, nifty little message board in your town. And they said you want that they want you to clear out the abandoned city of Axholm to possibly use as a refuge. And I know for a fact that the dwarves who used to live there had a uh, had quite a collection of machinery parts and ballistas. All inoperative now, but we could put them to good use, I think. So Either way, we need to head back to town and pick up a few supplies. So... And uh, turn turn some quests, too. Turn in some quests. So... So... We're going to head back to town, get supplies, get quests, maybe rest a little bit until it's morning. Maybe we could crack a couple of eggs, some of those those, uh, people being mean to our friends. we got to straighten them out. Straighten them out. Also, as a DM note, I would like everyone to be here for the the last dungeon. Well, all right. Well, then I guess we go back to town, get supplies, get rest, and then the next day we're, we'll head off to Axholm and Axel. clear it out, get parts, and all that good stuff. Though. Right. I also forgot to mention that uh Where is Axel? Along with um along with all the dwarves and the gnome and all that, you see uh a number of those um crab like uh ale barrels. Apparently Factory was able to uh repair some. Neat. And uh they're helping like move away um uh, move away debris. But you do spend some time there. You watch the dwarf set up some explosions. Yeah. Um, explosions device. And um almost like a a fireworks treat when it grows dark. They they demolish this this uh house with TNT. And it's just a magnificent sight. Truly. Truly the love that the love of demolition is universal. <laughs> but since it is getting dark, you uh, you spend the night camping, telling like uh, catching up with the dwarfs, telling them about your adventures. Yeah, they impressed. Oh yeah, really impressed. Nice, nice. No, no check required. They're they're like, wow. <laughs> All right. So uh, the next morning, you're back on the trail to to Fandolin. And we're going to check the quest, because I believe you haven't returned to town since completing them. Yeah. So the town is kind of how, how you remember it. A lot drier this time. Uh, so the roads aren't, aren't, aren't flooded with mud. Uh, where would you like to go? We should go to Harbin and, and get our what's uh, get our what's worth uh, our money's worth. Get, get what's owed ours. That's right. Man, we have a lot to turn in. No. I mean, we haven't come back since we initially left for the Dragon Barrow. Oh, I think. Oh, we came back after uh, Little Man died. 
Oh yeah, oh. we can't make him deliver the little man Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't here for that one. Yeah, before you set off to the uh the forest. Got it. A lot of things happened in the forest. So you find Harp. He goes Oh, it's you lot, isn't it? Oh, very well. You know, bleed the town dry after all I'm paying these reavers to quote unquote protect us. Yeah. What reavers? Why are you? you look what are you around here? and they're kind of pat- patrolling the streets. Um, Wait. What we hear, the leaders haven't been around in days. Which means their underlings have been causing mis- quote unquote mischief for days now. Don't keep them under control. What kind of mischief have you been up to? And, yeah, and one by one, 100 gold pieces. Um, he slips through the, the mail slot. Are they the greasy? Here. <laughs> by the way, I got word about my, uh, my half-brother. It's a Jason? shame... It's a shame. Shame about the shame about his business, but he seemed like a very decent fellow. Wonder what happened. Yeah, he was always mother's favorite. Yes, that, that makes absolutely least, perfect sense. But I got my father's good looks. I'm sure you did. Yeah. What do you ask, Bryce? Um, um, what kind of trouble that the the Reavers are causing? But what have they been doing? He just goes. They've been acting just more like a like a. a they just I've been been acting more like goons than protectors. Well, they. I'm calling things like. Expecting free thing and walking into the tavern and just taking drinks and food and things like that. Oh, they've been. Uh, don't like to, don't like to talk about it though. They, uh, they don't want to get on their bad side. You know? Yeah. Um, well, well they're not get on the bad side. Do you feel like we need to go crack some heads together? Maybe see if they see if some common sense can come out. Yeah, which one's causing the most trouble? Punch them in the face. I'd rather have them here. More orcs attack. That's for sure. Well, that's that's a lot. Put up with them. Well, on the orc front, there's a lot less of them now. (laughs) A whole lot less of them. Yes, you've been uh, you've been busy. One orc, still too many orcs, if you ask me. Point once again to the giant fire in the in the distance. Yes, we have been quite busy. Is that fire getting bigger? <laughs> I look. Yes, yes, I think it is. You see the smokestack from here. That's a. I'm sure that's not going to be a concern. No. It, but your lizard friend is right. They have been expecting free things. Half the towns in the oh, half the shops in the town are owing, owing protection money. They put taxes on goods coming in and out. This is nothing like what I discussed with um, Halia. Ah, nothing at all. And then now the leaders have been gone. They're just causing a ruckus. Every night in the Sleeping Giant Inn. Who's the second in control? Mm-hmm. We can draw a reason with them to try to make everyone be less aggressive. As far as I know, one of their higher-ups remained behind, but not one of the commanders. And Haley is the one that hired them in the first place, right? She's old, she's old friends with... Uh, their leader. Mm. The uh, similarly named but totally different Helia. 
<laughs> right. Maybe that's why they became friends. Could be. Oh. They bonded over having that's neither here nor there. Maybe maybe while we're here we should stop in I'm saying to the group and have a chat with Halia. Maybe she Or the or the leader that they let or the the uh the guy that they left behind who's in charge. Well as mercenaries, you know, they're they're led by the money and if Halia is the one that's paying him, no, I feel uh, like she Oh, he just took her advice on who to hire? What group? I think so. He, okay. she like convinced him that what the town needs is a, is a hired militia. Okay. I, I, they're definitely in bed with her is what I'm trying to get at. She probably is very well aware of what they're doing and uh, maybe, well, maybe needs to be here. Now I will since it was a, a while ago, we'll remind you you had a chat with her. Oh, about the, the swords um, and selling to Neverwinter. Yeah, to Halia, and she had said that um that it hasn't gone exactly like she had planned either. Okay, okay, so maybe she isn't to blame like I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't think I okay. think she's as much a she's she's as much a victim. Uh, of this than everybody else is. Okay. I was thinking she's on, she's a bad guy. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think doesn't they're... Mean she's a, doesn't mean she's a good guy. That's, that's fair. <laughs> I believe she is neutral in all this. Okay. But the only person who I'm thinking is actually actively against us at this point is right in front of us. <laughs> but since he's still, since he's still paying us, I'm willing to overlook it for now. And with regards to one thing he said, you know, if if we were to confront the Reavers and they were to leave town, they are defenseless here. So if well, we, but we are working on that. Uh, but we haven't you solved it. be defenseless, King Zizix. If you have your, uh, if, if you have this place be your new kingdom, your your people armed with their superior weapons can work as the defenders. In payment, a payment will only need to be just a home. Well, that is yeah, an you, idea. You did send about a dozen lizard folk. Yeah. How many reavers are still in the town here? I asked Garvin. For a party of four, <laughs> um, which I am working on now to uh, make sure it doesn't kill you all. Um, <laughs> We're trying. Uh, it, it doesn't always have to come to a fight. <laughs> we could talk our way out of this. Yeah, okay. Um, we could. We could. He goes, uh, there's. I, I would imagine there's um, at least a, a dozen. Maybe some more that are usually on patrol or um, okay. or a watch out during the various times, but most of the time they're just raising hell with a sleeping giant. Sounds to me like a, a throwing performance is needed. Um. What? So like uh like with the uh, shockless characters, she could enthrall them and charm them all into leaving. Well, that is a possibility. Yeah, they're all gathered in one spot. One performance. They all see it. If uh, the ones that fail their wisdom check, they leave town, and then we uh we uh, clean up the rest. Yeah, maybe it just starts with a chat with the second in command, though. Well, yeah, let's start with like let's that. start talking to him before we. Start. I do have a feeling the talk is not going to go very far. He's I mean, got. <clears throat> we'll see. I mean, it might. Hey, who knows? It might. They may. They may be sick of this. As they may be sick of being abandoned as much as we are. 
It sounds like they're having fun with it. All right. You see uh, the front door of uh, Stone Hill in open. And you see Thistle run out. Happy to see you guys. Greetings, Thistle. How are you doing? Oh, you guys are back. We are back. You got my message. Uh, did you meet Factory in in uh, Connieberry? And we did. She sends her regards. Oh, that's nice. She says she's going to bring back a, a giant robot like you, big fellow, but even bigger. The greatest of us all. That would be something to see. And are you going to get rid of those quote-unquote mercenaries? I'm getting kind of tired of them. We are on our way to discuss the situation with them and hopefully reach a peaceable solution to this. But if not, well, at least we tried. Oh, by the way, uh, Baruch, um, you had you had asked about um, lodgings since you uh, didn't want to stay in the in the inn anymore. Well, I didn't want to stay there while the leaders were not there. While the leaders of the uh, so-called Reavers were there. But, since they seem to have absconded themselves for the long term, I might just stay in the end for just a little while longer. Oh, because Mr. Stonehill says you're you're welcome for as long as you like. But I imagine, I imagine someday that... Uh, you probably move on from Fandolin, like a lot of people have. But that's okay. That's that is life. But uh as long as any of you, any of you are in town, you're more than welcome to have a room at the Stone Hill Inn. You're very generous. Except for uh yeah, if I ever gain the ability to sleep, I will sleep here. Except all those uh, lizard folk that came in here the other day wanting rooms. I'm afraid we couldn't accommodate all of them. Well, I mean, it's somewhat understandable. Is there anything you can, Mr. Stonehill, Mr. Stonehill had the idea that they could stay at, at uh, the, the, the manor outside of town. It's been abandoned for years. Uh, they, they and, um, don't... I heard they don't they don't mind if like places don't have like roofs and stuff. So as long exactly. as they're not, or- I, th- I think as long as there's not orcs there, they'll be fine. We might even set up. Oh yeah, it's been a, a villa. Even these woods in the on the east side, southeast. You know, we like we like forest. Well, I think it would be pretty cool to have a. Tribal lizard folk, especially ones that are nice, you know, not far away. Yeah. That that sounds like a mighty fine idea. And as you're talking, a clearly drunk um, reaver just walks past you. To the outskirts of town and goes, I gotta start my post, my watch. Well, I call out to, what? Well, oh, there, friend. Hey, I hope. Hi, how you doing there, sir? Um. Hey, you're that, you're that elephant guy. Well, yes, I am. How are you doing this you want, fine day? You want a you want a peanut? <laughs> Why, yes, I would like a peanut. Thank you very much, sir. I but I got a peanut in here somewhere. He reaches in his pocket. 
He takes out like just a ball of lint. <laughs> here's your here's your peanut. He throws it at you. I grab the ball of lint and I go, "Sir, I, I don't think this is a peanut, but I uh, thank you for the gift." I was just seeing how you were see how you were doing because you don't look so well. I'm on duty. <laughs> Gotta. Gotta look after this mud hole of a town. And what a fine town it is, idiot. Yeah. But you seem like maybe, and I'm not trying to insinuate anything here, I'm just saying that maybe you might have had just a little too much to drink. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having some fun and getting a little drunk true, but you're also charged with protecting this town, and maybe just maybe not doing that drunk might not be a good idea. It says I'm drunk. I was... Well, there's various there's various signs that you may have imbibed a bit too much. Can I, just, can I run a medicine check on him to verify if he is drunk? <laughs> sure. Definitely. I, and Trust me, I trust me. I have drunk a lot, and I know what drunk looks like. Nothing else to nothing else to do here. Yeah, he's pretty drunk, uh, big fellow. <laughs> you are in fact drunk, sir. It is scientifically proven. You must have a sit and have some water. Yes, a good a good dr- a good cup of water might help clear your head. I found that. Yeah. If I don't get to my post, Tobin's gonna gonna rip me a new one. Tobin? Dobin. Oh, Dobin. Oh. How about this? How about we go talk to Dobin for you, and you go, you know, you go rest at the end. You do my. You would you would do my watch for me? You would do that for me. Yeah. We can have oh, man. I, I know I loved you, man. I I give the I give the clearly drunken man a a pat on the back. He uh he promptly throws up. <laughs> oh, and I, I yeah. kind of pat him on the back a little bit more. So there, there. That's a waste That's of alcohol. <laughs> They're true, but not, you probably feel better now. Oh, lay down. <laughs> he probably yeah. faints. Just like right, I lay down right here. Now, um, as much as as much as I would look, as much as I would find it funny to leave him here, uh, I'm just a little too decent a person to do that. So, I'm gonna pick, I pick him up and I take him to the sleeping giant. Since apparently that's where they're all staying. You're all going to head there? <laughs> Vertican and Dardagon just don't care. And they go to Stone Hill, Stone Hill Inn and go to sleep. Wow. In a long conversation about the Sun God. It's just so rude, I know. How inconsiderate, but. Um, takes you about a day and a half to walk to the sleeping giant. No. <laughs> I kid. It's next door. Yeah. But, um, I would say, Maruk, you probably tr- tried this place once when you first arrived. And, um, you found it kind of subpar compared to Stone Hill Inn. But it was uh, a lot nicer back then because it wasn't full of hooligans. That's for sure. And, uh, swing open. Swing open the door. And you see a bunch of Reavers 
Just having a grand old time. Is uh, Shock Shock able to stand up? And... Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, is Shock able to scan the room to see who looks like they might be the one in charge? Uh, give me a perception. You can see two of these guys are seem to be commanding more of a presence than others. Mm. Which two? 22. You see one guy at the bar. Kind of the only one being civil. Quietly sipping a um, quietly sipping a drink. You see one really rowdy one. That's just take, taking flask after flask of of, uh, of ale and just pouring him down his gullet and giving the most epic of burps. Mm. Shaka points these two guys out to the rest of the crew and says, Hey, those are the guys that look like they're in control here. We should probably speak with them. Leave these other filth to, to their beers. Well, I'm still getting them Am I still okay? Oh, Sarah fell asleep. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't entertaining enough. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to right. say like. <laughs> I, 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 I turned the couch into uh, the couch into bed mode, and she just, she just fell right asleep. It's okay. <laughs> Joey, I mean, I'm entertained. <laughs> I only felt hey. I I admit I fell asleep once. Oh, we know. I can't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Chris fell asleep once during one of our games. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. I guess. Am I the only one who has it? I guess. <laughs> I do think we should keep these conversations as friendly as possible because there are Absolutely. a lot of. of these guys around, and they may just be looking for a fight. Actually, am I still carrying that guy that fainted? Oh, uh, yeah, if you want. Have him, over, have him over your shoulder. I got, I shout up. Excuse me, um, would you mind telling me where the rooms are? We seem to have found someone who needs a room. You see, um, a bartender. Who's just like seems this overwork trying to provide all these drinks to these these guys? I don't have an icon for him, but he appears to be a a, a dwarven woman with an eye patch. Looks badass. He goes, uh, oh, not another one. Seems like half of these guys just pass out the minute they exit the bar. I practically find him in piles in the in the, in the front there. Oh, so just put, just him, put in him, the him in the corner. There's no use, no no use putting him up in his room. All right, I uh, put him over here in the corner. <laughs> uh, I remember you, Baruch. Didn't care for my ale, from what I remember. Well, I well, to each their own, I suppose. He's more of a mushroom wine guy. Well, I'm trying yeah, it, to get better about that. From behind you, you hear a few of the reavers going, Another round! Another round! And the bar bartender goes, Normally I would be happy about the business. They were paying... Oh, um. They're gonna drink me out of. They're gonna drink me out of house and home. Within the within the week, I guarantee it. They're not paying. Uh, not a, not a bloody cent. Uh, does Harbin know this? 
I suspect he's the one that made the deal. They'll send the bill to him. That's never see a return. No, when these reavers first right. showed up, they said. When these reavers first appeared, they said, "All be covered by a, a by a Neverwinter." I haven't seen a cent. They complain about me cooking, about me drink, and about me rooms, but they still devour them like they're all starving to death. Yeah. Parasites, the lot of them. Uh, 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 that's right, sister. We should anyway, find some uh, way to get them out. We don't need them anymore. Yes. But maybe we can talk to them peacefully about it. <laughs> you look around. And like some of them are like just like just covered in ale. And like there's just food everywhere, making a mess. Some of them are like punching each other in the corner just for fun. <laughs> you know, as you will. You see the big guy. At least it's punchy. At least it's you still see, punchy. You see the big guy in the in the middle just like headbutt someone. Uh well, after he uh, after he got in his way. I'm about to say, at least they're still doing punchy fisty and not knifey stabby. <laughs> uh you weren't you weren't here on on Saturday. Ah, <laughs> uh, never mind. Saturday, Saturday, yeah, Saturday night is usually night just every night. It's uh, karaoke night, you know, Saturday. <laughs> Causes <laughs> lots of emotion. I thought Saturday was trivia. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, that's usually Thursdays. Gotcha. Yeah, Thursday night, most popular night. <laughs> you should come by the Secret Giant more often. We have a good time. <laughs> And who can forget? And who for, who can forget Wing Wednesday? <laughs> oh, Wing Wednesday. Cox so, Trace wings and butter and uh, barbecue sauce. <laughs> so, Shackle goes up to this guy right up here and plops her hands on the table and says, "So, what's this I hear about you not paying any uh paying any gold to this fine establishment?" Now hold on there, Miss Shackle. Let's be. Let's be a bit more polite to the. To he the he just looks at you and, like, just spits on the floor. And it spits, like, green and mucusy. It's rude. Uh, hey, big fella, uh, could you. Chaka, Chaka, like, uh, snorts and spits, like, tries to spit exactly where he spat, but leave more gross and disgusting. Give me a performance yeah. check. Yeah, you, you make a nice, equally as gross snot puddle right next to his. And he just goes, Don't need to pay. We're, at, we're here at the expense of our benefactor we are, boys! Aren't we boys? And everyone just cheers. Yeah! They're, they're all night drinking! Well, your drinking days are done. We don't need you anymore. I, Chaka, uh, I, I, I see Chaka is in a Chris Bow, <laughs> strong, powerful woman mode. Yes. Yeah. Strong? Chaka, 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 I need, I need, I, you're at a, you're at a nine. I kind of need you with a six or a five. Maybe roll, roll that back a little bit. We're trying to be, we're trying to be nice and polite to the, these five protectors of our town. You know, this guy's just taking a big drink, slams down his flask. He goes, I know who you are. You're those pansies that go out on adventures. <laughs> but yes, we, are, we do go out on adventures and kill a lot of orcs, which we've done. 
And in fact, if you look out that window right there, you'll see that you see that nice big column of smoke that's getting bigger yeah. as I speak. Yeah, that was us. Is it still getting bigger? Do we need to be worried? <laughs> nah, I are think as far as the thing in D and D, yeah, <laughs> it I sounds like they are. Uh, I think. Oh, you boys think you're the first to ever cause a fire? <laughs> no, but I don't think we'll, and I know, but I don't think we'll be the last either. But we, but we are the ones that caused that fire, killing a lot of. Oh, orcs. What, you ever hear? You ever hear of the town of Appleseed down south? That's a made-up town. Doesn't exist. It's not made up. It's a real town. Doesn't exist anymore. Burned to the ground. Say it's roasted apple seeds? Uh, Shaka believes him. Well. (laughs) (laughs) When, uh, when Bonesaw leaves a town... Usually not less standing. Ain't that right, boys? Here, 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 here. I'm hoping this town's a little bit different since you're here to protect it. Ah, the time will come where the boss won't find this place useful anymore. It'll end up like all the other ones are awake. <coughs> if it's not burnt to the ground, it'll be penniless. Is this what you do? This is, you've done this before? You ever heard of the town of Appleseed? <laughs> uh, sir. Yeah, I have a feeling that's the only, that's the only town he knows about. Okay. That's, the only, that's when you joined the group. <laughs> hmm. I just thought they were, they were just hooligans. But now I... And seeing their malicious intent to begin with. Oh, and all the and as we look around, just I wonder. I wonder why you find it so necessary to drink yourselves drunk when all you're doing is protecting a town. Well, it's free. And it's here, ain't, ain't it? It is not free. You're, you're taking from this poor young lady. He just grunts and dismisses you. Yeah. I think it's... I'm sure there's better things you can do with your time. You know, like, go find some orcs to kill. I've That's been a reaver about. since I was... Been a reaver since I was in diapers. So, what I'd like to so, do. so last week then? He's still in diapers. <laughs> that sounded like an insult to me. Yeah, it was an insult. Mm. I think your contract with Fandolin might be coming <laughs> to an early close. You. Okay, so I just rolled a wisdom check. He got a five. And like he was, he's trying to figure it out in his head. <laughs> you can see the you can see the wheels turning, but it's like like some of the ge- some of the teeth are missing. Yeah, I mean that was a yeah five. He goes, but he does go. You have something to say. I, all right, you know. We want you out of this town, please. What I'm saying is, I think maybe it's time you found a a different profession. It, see, it may not be advantageous to be a Stone Cold Reaver in the near future. The uh, quiet man at the bar 
takes a sip of his drink. And I'm not saying and that as a threat. I'm saying it as... Slowly stands up. And he says to you, Maruk, I wouldn't waste your time on... What do you call yourself? Bone saw? He's just one of our thugs. <clears throat> he seems to be the most talkative one. But you have a point there. He does seem like someone who... Maybe not the sharpest tool in the shed. Dobin North, at your service. Ah, Maruk. Self-proclaimed Fandalorian. I, I elbow, I elbow Zizix. Mm. Say the line. Our commander's hey. gone. Oh, this is the way. <laughs> <laughs> With our leaders gone, Helia left me in charge. And I although my loud friend does not have the best of manners, everything he says is true. We are here at the behest of the Lords of Neverwinter. Did the Lords of Neverwinter encourage you to steal from the shops and call it protection money? And use the town supplies without and any sort of payment. Drink yourself so drunk that there is a literal pile of you in the corner. Wait, and pee I without wait, using the did, did I miss something on that one? I was a drunk oh. guy. Yeah, Hello. that makes sense. Hello, Bun. But, uh, he goes, well, you don't see Neverwinter sending anyone to stop us, now, do you? Hmm. I have a distinct feeling that Neverwinter probably gives two rats asses about here. And that's, and that's me over, and that's me eyeballing it. Taking us less than two weeks to take over this town. Was we that, are Fandolin. Was that the intent from the we, start? We are Fandolin. I... And once our once the commanders fulfill their mission, people won't want us to leave. No matter how much we drink or piss into the potted plants. Rude. So. What is their mission? Please tell me. Please excuse my please excuse my friend here. She tends to be a bit excited. He just kind of chuckles. So, you Fandalorians, if you call yourself that, go to your little message boards and run the errands of that idiot townmaster. I would say He's... something, but no, he is kind of an idiot. And just leave us be. Well, I would what? leave you be, but since I just since I do kind of care about this town and the fact that I just had to carry one of your people here after he literally threw up in front of me and then passed out. I, you know, I have a few complaints. Just the, you know, some suggestions. You don't have to take them, but I, it would be to your advantage if you did. He turns around and he goes, business hours, 8 to eight to 5. Make an appointment next time. He returns to his drink. I do apologize for not making an appointment, sir, but as it is, we were busy. Point out the window one more time to the giant stack, to the ever growing fountain of smoke coming from the forest. See, there was a giant tree made up that sucked, that was bled blood and caused things to, and caused things to become zombified, horrible 
plant creatures. We had to go burn it down. It was quite fun, but you know, something that needed to be done. He finishes his drink, just holds up a finger. He goes, Barmaid, another, please. I'm not a barmaid. But she gives him another whiskey. I, I turn to the barmaid. How much is that whiskey normally? She says, um, five silver. I toss her five silver. Oh, yes, I can retire. Finally retire. <laughs> silver. And the bar just continues to be rowdy. So should we... We've expect, inspected these guys. Um, what are your suggestions on how to keep them in line while we're gone? Should we at least get them to pay their tab? I don't think they have the money to pay you the tab. Where did the money that Harbin was giving them go? That's a very good question. Because if they're ga- if they're getting paid, they should be able to pay off their tab. I have a feeling they've drunk more than their tab. No, they could pay it off by cleaning up this place. Any of these people look like they know anything about cleaning anything ever. This doping guy looks like it. That's one. And he can tell the others what to do. But the question is, will he? Perhaps if we reason with him or make some sort of fun wager. Well, it might be worth a shot. Mm. And he's just, you know, he's kind of looking at us. He probably even... Sir, is there anything we could do to make you, you know, clean up this place? Or tell your... Find compatriots to do so? He, he kind of just laughs. He goes, You're welcome to ask. Not. This Not. establishment does have its own employees, but I heard they all quit. Mm. I have an idea, says Shaka, as she runs over to, uh, the bar and hops on top of it. Oh, I just I just put my hands on my face. I know she, this is going to be bad. She uh she takes out, out her uh, staff of uh, bird calls and uh, waves in the air uh, like a, a giant uh, like a majestic eagle screech fills the entire cavern. And she's like, everyone, pay attention to me. And she takes out her uh, her lute and does an enthralling performance, mm-hmm. performing a song about the. The joys of paying off your tab and cleaning up bars <laughs> as a way to try to uh, warm the hearts of these people to uh, to uh, right their wrongs. Are you saying she's doing this Disney? She's doing a literal Disney cleanup song. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and pay and pay your so, tab song. So the Eagle Street definitely causes the bar to go quiet. Mm-hmm. What is she? Let's take this step by step. What does she do after that? Uh, she uh, she takes out her uh, her loot of illusions and she does an enthralling performance. Uh, and they all have to uh, make a DC saving throw oh, of fifteen. I mean, what... <laughs> okay, what, what I'm saying is, let's RP this a little bit. Okay. So she takes out her loot and she tries to sing a song, a great song, a ballad of the the. the great joys of paying your bar tab and cleaning up the uh, cleaning up establishments that look like they're down on their luck. Okay. That's exactly what you said before. But uh... Yes. I think he, what he wants you, he wants you to I think he wants you to try and sing the song. No, no. Oh. Like, how do you get their attention? How do you keep their attention? I, oh, with, I, I, well, I did the eagle thing at first and then, like, uh, as I sing this, as Shaka sings the song, she jumps from table to table, 
um, like uh, kind of like the I Got a Dream song, and uh, <laughs> it's like just hopping from table to table, singing. So, okay, well, let's let, okay, let's rewind. Okay, wherever you are, let's uh, let's do a performance check as you just randomly start to sing a song <laughs> after a eagle is screeched. <laughs> Well, pretty good. It's also it's an enthralling performance too. I'll put I'll put that on the uh, on the thing so I can see it. How do I put on the thing? There we go. Has chooses four humans, I think. Um, she chooses Dobin. Prisma modifier. So you can choose up to uh, um, X amount of creatures equaling your charisma modifier. So that's that's four. Four? Yeah. Okay. So I'll choose Dobin. Uh, Diaper Thug. Um, which one looks like, uh, I guess, the other guy on Diaper, Th- Diaper Thug's table. And uh, this guy in the very back. Well, so 60 feet. Put a radius on you. Which is pretty big. Yeah, so you pretty much have control of choose anyone in the tavern all right so with force of 29 it immediately the uh the patrons like quote-unquote patrons they're not paying anything are immediately just enthralled by this entertainment and on the spot she uh, makes up a uh a song about the glories of a uh, Paying your waitress, or uh, paying your tabs and tipping your waitress. A few of them try to join in, but they don't know the words. And uh, as the song ends, so which ones are you trying to enthrall? Dobin, uh, the Viper Thug guy, uh, the same guy that's at his table, and. Uh, the one that's in the really way back. Uh, this guy. Okay, so uh, what's your spell saving throw? Uh, it says uh, wisdom saving throw DC 15. 15. I want to see if it encouraged them to uh, pay off their tab and uh, help clean up around the place and be more helpful around town. Well, Dobin fails. The boss, uh, the uh, the big thug. He's not the boss. This is his future thing. Also fails. And who else? Um, the... the guy at his table and this guy over here. Sort of rolling. He fails. It was the last, the last one. This guy in the. Okay. He fails too. Oh, oh. So you're able to, you're able to charm uh, these four people. Which means they cannot make any dangerous action towards you. And right now you're they're pretty agreeable. 
That's awesome. <laughs> and she finishes off the song. The big flourish. And the place erupts in cheers. But especially the ones that she charmed are clapping extra, extra hard. Thank you, thank you all. Don't forget to tip your waitress. I'll be here all weekend. Fish. Big guy goes. Big guy goes. You heard the lady. Everyone tip your waitresses. <laughs> <laughs> and they all start eagerly pulling out coin and just start tossing a bunch of silver pieces. On, on, onto the table, and the uh, the uh, innkeep the uh, barkeeper just goes by and starts scooping them up. I would. And uh, the ones that are charmed just basically hand over their entire whatever's in their pocket, so it could equal like ten or twenty gold each of for each of them. That's awesome. Good. Good. So. I asked the uh, bartender if that covers, if if that comes close to covering tonight. Oh, I would, I would say so. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, tell me, uh, tell me, lass, uh, a wee bit, a wee bit of magic in that performance. The real magic came from people like you. That's a, it's just like Sarah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what she would say. <laughs> You're the real Fandalorians. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> well, I'm uh, Dillman just pushes past you, Maruk. This is next to uh, Shaka. It just goes, well, perhaps you I misjudged. Everyone does that at first, and then she brushes her hair off to the, off her shoulders. Well, let, let me offer you a drink. I'm sorry, I don't I don't drink with strangers who uh who don't protect towns and bleed them dry. <laughs> Indeed. Perhaps if you change your ways, I might I might take you up for that offer. Well, I'm afraid it's not up to me. But you're the one in charge here, so I think it is up to you. Give me a persuasion check with advantage. Come on, come on, come on, come on, dice gods. Bless us. And with advantage, maybe you'll roll higher. Oh. Eight. So nineteen. Um Well I can give I goes I can give these men orders. But uh and most of them would, would follow it. But they're not used to this kind of thing. They're just used used to being uh um bodyguards or pr- protecting caravans. Like they're not used to be cooped up in a town like this, standing watch all night. And they That's may obey problem. orders for they may obey orders for a few nights, but as soon as the the cat's away, the mice will play, as seen here. Well, all we need is a few nights. If you could train if you could get them the ship up in those two not few nights, then I'll have that drink with you. The uh, bigger thug goes on your other side. He goes, 
How you doing? That's uh, quite a performance. <laughs> Why, thank you. I learned from uh, from my bardic school. Let me uh, buy you a beer. I should know. You know what? I don't know if I uh, I could drink a, a beer with you. I was this this guy of Dobin has been asking if I could drink with him. Why should I take a drink with you instead? Yeah. Wait, was that you will take a drink or you won't take a drink? Oh, no, it's like why? Why should I get a drink from you and him when when Dobin's been offering me a drink? Like, what make, what makes you cooler than Dobin? So I can handle my liquor. Can you handle these men better than Dobin? Can you tell them to right the wrongs that they have done in the past better than he can? Yeah, I was confused again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of words, but I like when you say them. I will only drink with the person who can make this town peaceful and happy. As she pushes away from the bar dramatically, and then uh, just like looks like she's not interested and returns to her friends. Dobin looks at Bonesaw. He goes, Melvin, what are you doing? <laughs> she was in- clearly enchanted by me. He just laughs. Think you have a chance with her. Oh dear. Uh- I don't like where this is going. Uh, Ch- Chaka walks over her shoes. She gently places a dagger in between them uh, on the oh, counter dear. and then walks back. I, just, I move away from this because I know I don't want to be in the splash zone. They both look at the dagger. more step back, I think it's I think this flight show is gonna be very large. And the uh the big thug man quite easily, surprisingly almost grabs the dagger and impales it into the shoulder of a of the of a uh, Dobin. He takes four damage. I shot up. But at no. Oh. Say not so tough anymore. Leave my lady alone. And the eyes of Dobin becomes more focused. As the charm wears off. <laughs> Jack, I don't think that worked out as well as you did. And, and he goes. Oh. He just goes, oh. Made a mistake, my friend. He takes two swings at the uh, at the thug, both with which miss though, and they immediately start to tussle. Hooray! Well, that's and one by one, the other reavers kind of pick sides. Start to fight each other. Breaking bottles. Throwing drunken punches. 
Um, and the bar, and the barkeep goes. Oh, it's that time of night again. You better make yourself scarce unless you want to help finish this. Shaka plays on her little loot barroom blitz. <laughs> What do you guys do? There's a, there's a there's a fight breaking out. Um, do we really want to get into a bar bar fight? Maybe they'll call the herd themselves, and then uh, we'll take out the remainder. Yes, I, let's step outside and let them resolve things. And we'll check back in a little bit and see how and you know, pick up the bodies, so to speak. Are you having this conversation as, like, people are being thrown around? <laughs> and, like, balls are being ha- thrown? We're having this conversation as we as we duck and weave our way out to the exit. Wouldn't you agree that's what we're doing? As uh, Ashoka passes by, the big thug. He just kind of looks sad. He goes, turns around and going, goes, where are, you, where are you going? I have to freshen myself up for our date later, but only, but, but it'll only happen if you survive. As you say that, two, <laughs> the uh, Dobin's longsword just impales him. Through the chest. He just goes, I look forward to it! (laughs) He's slumped over dead. Well, at least he died happy. But now, Dobin looks up at you guys. Oh, I knew we should have. By this point, the other people are no longer charmed. Oh. He goes, Oh, you're going to wish you haven't done that. I already puts, do. He puts two fingers up to his mouth and whistles. He goes, Reavers, end of them. I just. Let's roll this. Let's roll this. Yeah. I just sigh and go, Well, I had a feeling. That almost worked until they fought, began fighting. <laughs> yes, I'm not, yes, I wonder. I wonder why that would have. I wonder what could have caused that. That was all me. But you did get rid of the big guy. The big guy. But now we have this guy to deal with, and he is mildly pissed at us. But he's weaker. He had to fight the big guy. What, what what you should have done was summon a bunch of animals for her to dance with. Oh man! Dang. Oh, good. Also, welcome to the welcome to the game. I've been here like twenty minutes. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, it said me things. So I'm saying welcome. Because I'm not there. <laughs> it, it was interesting. Wait, is there any I'm way gonna... we can get? Is there any way we can get? Uh, American in here, like have him make a dynamic entrance. If you, yeah, if you want to join in, uh, I'll I'll be delayed a round or two just uh, just to make it all so it's a, and suddenly he just bursts through the door. <laughs> It'd be funny if he came through like like a window or something. But... He came through the window where the fire is behind yeah, us. Yeah, doesn't he? Uh, doesn't he sleep here? Uh, yeah, so I, I, um, he gets woken up by the noise. Oh, there we go. So everyone is slightly damaged. They've been fighting for a few minutes. It is normally like 17 D&D battles. <laughs> so usually they would all be dead by now. But, um, Well, some battle music. I'm surprised one or two of them aren't dead. 
besides the big one, but you know, maybe they just got lucky. All right, big fellow. Big fellow. Uh, what? Hold on one moment. I'm going to see if there's any, like, barroom fight music. <laughs> barroom Brits. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't play that, but. No, I can get you some initiative. I should work earlier. Okay, big fellow, what do you do? I I take my uh, Ikla and I uh, throw it at Dobin straight to the chest. Okay. Oh, that hits. And I return to my hand and I throw it again. That hits. Sally comes up and punches him in the face. There we go. That does not hit. Thus concludes my turn. Feeling you're going to regret moving there. Joey, I rolled late. I'm, I ended up with 19. Um. Okay, then you go next. Okay. I think this music so, isn't appropriate for this. We should do good old rap battle. I think I am going to pull out my, you know, newfound love spell, Conjure Animals. Oh, no. You may have heard of it. Yep. <laughs> um, I think what I'm going to go for is four beasts of challenge rating one half. <laughs> okay. So, four sharks plop on the ground and start <laughs> swatting around. Maybe they're land sharks. So, two, two bears. Okay. Are they brown bears? Or black bears or polar bears? bears. Okay. Just bears. <laughs> two boars. Dumb bears, dumb boars. Materialize in front of you. Nice. That's nice. All right. And it says roll their initiative. Okay. And these guys, um, Hit points are set up, so just bear with me a minute as I. Uh, I'll bore with you. Okay. Now we'll bear with you until you get boring. <laughs> I don't know. Usually they 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 have their uh, hit points all. I can pop them in. I I I got them here right here. 
Can I? Yeah. Well, it's not nine wolves, but I think that does seem that seems like a fair amount of animals. Two pigs and two skexies. Sorry for the delay. All right, uh, where do they roll for their initiative? Uh, six, and I only, I only did one of the bears, but they'll all be the same. Yeah. See, when you get higher level, longer things take. Yeah. And that is gonna be, ooh. No, and then a bonus action, I'm going to wild shape, let's see, into a big old bra. That's such a waste. No, I'm not going to use a wild shape on this. Unless I need to later. That is my turn. That concludes Zizix. So this troublemaker comes up to Sally. Takes out his centaur. She takes, ooh, crit. She takes a uh, uh, ten slashing damage. So, but uh, well, what was the um, the roll for the okay. guy? Okay, then yeah, he gets ten. Yeah, ten slashing damage. This one runs up to Shaka. God, another crit. She takes 10, 10 slashing damage. Jeez. Can, um, can Sally use that uh, deflect attack thing so the guy rolls a disadvantage, or is it too late for that? Is that only against other people or herself, too? No, it's only against, uh, I guess, for other people. Like, if, uh, it also should be within 5 feet. Is this, is the, the guy 5 feet or 10 feet away? He's ten feet away. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work then. Never mind. This one runs up to Maruk. Twenty-one. Hits. Takes seven slashing damage. How did they? Where were these rolls? <laughs> You're probably thinking, where were these rolls last week for you? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, they were this week. This one's going to. Over here. So, this one takes out a uh, light crossbow. And uh, he's going to attack Baruch as well. Uh, 15. Miss. Dart whizzes by my ear. Doesn't hit me. And the other one's going to attack you, big fella. 22. Um... Imagine yeah, that it's. You take six piercing damage. These guys roll better than orcs. Oh. Shaka. All right. Shaka moves over here, and with her uh, sword Dragon's Bane, she, uh, she goes after uh, Dobin.
Uh, 14 will not hit. Damn. Um, can I, as a bonus action, can I expend a Bardic Inspiration point on myself to, uh, to add to my uh, attack? Well, I'm pretty sure you can't do it to yourself unless it's part of your, 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 uh, subclass. Which I don't believe is the case with you. With you. All right, so Bardic Inspiration on Maruk. You can do it! <laughs> All right. All right, so yeah. So these animals appear out of the ether. Yep. Let's see. I need to make sure I can get everything. Uh, 40. All right, they can all move 40. So this one is going to move to here. And this one's going to move to here. And this guy's going to come over here. And this guy's going to come over here. And uh, this this one is going to attack first, and he is going to take a a bite of the guy in front of him. Nine misses. All right, and then that same one will use his claws as he gets multi attack to try to maul him. I guess. Well, I'm that's not overpowered. I'm changing the rules. <laughs> Ah, bears get multi attack. Sorry. I know. Uh, that <laughs> this, misses too, though. Yeah. All right. Then the uh, guy to his left, the bear to his left, is going to do the exact same thing to his target. Uh, 14 hits. All right. So that bite, he chomps him into the shoulder for five damage. And then obviously a seven is going to miss. And let's see what kind of cool things a boar gets. So they they can charge. I know that. So if they charge towards an enemy, okay, they uh, could potentially do more damage. So if they See charge at least twenty feet straight towards a target, mm. then they get an extra d six damage. If they, uh, they did and not. They could be not prone. Let's see if we can get. So this guy was here. He can move 40 feet, so if he goes here, then... Can't run yeah. through an enemy, though. Yeah. So he, could probably, so he could probably charge this guy. Nah, I don't think... Feet. Yeah, but he can't get well, a straight line. I mean, you could back up one one space. No, nah, I gotta charge 20. No, but I was saying it's I don't get I don't have a straight line because there's tables and chairs. I don't think I don't think I can get the speed up on this one. Okay. It doesn't there are it, three people in front of you. Yeah, it does not it does not thematically make sense to be able to get that, but that is okay because both of these guys are still gonna um uh, uh tusk them. They're gonna try to poke them with their big old teeth. So that was, yeah. <laughs> so that was one for each. Um, 16 hits. Okay. Takes four slashing damage. And he goes... <laughs> that was interesting that it's slashing and not piercing. Uh, yeah. It doesn't... It doesn't quite... And, it, and that's what the character sheet says, but yeah. that doesn't make sense to me. All right, and that is the summoned beast. And I say, good job. Well, at least they didn't. At least they didn't kill the boss in one turn. <laughs> uh, Baruch, your turn. Oh, you you, the... you did roll really well with those. I and because of pack tactics, <laughs> I got um, three uh, crits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, Dustin. Well, um, but uh, you guys want to explain it? Like anyone listening in the podcast, uh, we I, we kind of like misread the rules a little bit, and so when 
Bryce summoned eight wolves. Um, technically, he's not supposed to choose what gets summoned. It's up to the dungeon master. And uh, wolves are tricky because pack tactics are pretty powerful. <laughs> it basically gives them like 30 more percent to hit than they normally would. But, all right, uh, Dustin, you uh, Well, I'm well, first, this, I'm, getting, I'm kind of mad at this whole thing went down the way it did, so I'm raging up. Which also means it's wild magic time. Woohoo! Let's see what the dice gives me today. Ooh. Seven. I always, I always root for the flump. Well, I, I always say a Okay. Seven is. Uh. Okay, this one's kind of weird. Um, flowers and vines temporarily grow around you until your rage ends. The ground within 15 feet of you is difficult terrain for your enemies. So just uh, all of a sudden, randomly, like 15 feet in a ra- in a radius around me. Well, not radius, but like 50, if you're 15 feet, like I guess like a square of 15 feet around me. Just, oh, so it's not a radius? It didn't say radius, it just said 15 feet. Okay. The ground within 15 feet of me is difficult terrain for my enemies. Only my enemies. Like, just this big old field of flowers and vines just grows up randomly in the in a tavern. And instantly the property value grows. <laughs> Is Shaka gonna talk to talk to flowers? Tempted. She's very tempted. Shaka's v- feeling very in tune with me today. Yeah. Da 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 ba da bum. Yeah, it's more centered on me, but. but yeah, that, that's right. that's good. Yeah, like. And it's gonna move when I move. Oh, no, oh, will. Yeah, it. If I move, it it kind of moves with me. Well, in that case, I'll see a radius. So, if I'm, I'm not really sure what that means. Difficult to read. I guess that means. Oh, move that basically it. means it takes. Double the movement speed to move one one spot. This doesn't seem amazingly useful, to be honest. Truly, it, it doesn't actually seem all that useful to me either. But I'm going to move here. Unless you choose where that where it is, but you said it moves with you. It, it's 15 feet around. It says. It says flowers and vines typically grow around me, so I'm guessing it's a 15 foot radius as I move. But I'm guessing it doesn't. I'm guessing it doesn't move though. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't think it's coming. It grows from the ground, right? Not from you, right? It no, it's grow. It grows from the ground from where I'm standing, and it keeps. Okay. And as I'm, and as I move. Okay. It says until my rage ends. Yes, okay. it's kind of weirdly. Would you like me to read it and interpret it? It says, "I'll give you the exact words." Oh, well, let me just uh, just make sure. Let me just read it. But you can uh, you can go ahead and attack if you want. I, uh, I am going to attack this guy here. My mighty battle axe. Okay. Twenty one hits. Does thirteen damage. You attacking this guy? I'm taking this guy. Yeah, it, it does not move with you. Oh. 
So there's just like a 15 foot square from centered from here. Yeah. It's just like flowered field. Wow. That, that is absolutely useless. <laughs> not, you know, not, not necessarily. I mean, yeah, not as useful as all the others. That's why you, the, if someone's chasing you, they will be true. Um, okay. I'm, I still have another attack. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're right. I keep forgetting your level, your level six or uh, five now. Twenty-four. Are you are you killing people? I am. I'm going to pull back my attack. I'm not going to kill him. I mean, I think that would. The only person who's died so far is this guy, and that was that was friendly fire. So. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to knock people out. I think. And I'm going to shout out. Hey, guys, I think it might be a good idea just to knock them out for now. This town I still will... does need protectors. We have the greatest protectors of all. The lizard men of King Zizix. <laughs> One of the uh, thugs raises his crossbow. He goes, I won't show you the same mercy. Wow. He aims it at Zizix. Wow. Well, that just makes us the better person then. Wow, dude. That's what I say to him. Gets a 22. And that's a big old hit. That's a crit. That is nuts. So you take 11 piercing damage. And gotcha. I want you to. Uh, wow, dude. Roll a con saving throw. Yeah, I get advantage on it because I am a battle caster. Oh, shoot. Does a 12 do it? No, because that's me. Is it half the damage or is it the damage? The damage for a minimum of 10. Ooh. So you pass. Woohoo! That was close. And who's the guy that did that? This guy. Okay. One runs up to Sally. This is a 16 hit. A 16 does hit. Just barely. So, see, it's a 17 and a 16 multi attack. She takes 13 damage, bludgeoning damage. And She's this not thug good. right here is going to fire a crossbow bolt at Maruk. As soon as it loads. A 20? That hits. Uh, I'm not take... raging. You are raging. You take three damage. All right. I believe that's all the thugs. Dorman turns to uh, Shaka. He goes, I can't believe I ever loved you. Give it up. You might love and me again. This is a 19 hit. A 19 hits, but with Sally next to her, um, um roll at disadvantage. Oh, really? Oh, is it for one of the attacks? Yeah, for, uh, for one of the attacks. Okay, so. One of them misses. Other one does not. And she takes 
Shaka takes a seven slashing damage. He's like, I've had worse shaving. <laughs> My incredibly hairy legs. <laughs> uh, it is the start of combat. If uh, this is going to be a dramatic entrance. Or the of the next round. Him. What? Unbutton. <laughs> yeah, is there gonna right. be a is 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 there gonna be a dramatic entrance? Uh dramatic entrance of uh yawning and coming down the stairs and <laughs> <laughs> okay. What yeah. the heck? <laughs> So I don't think this map has a stairs, but it has a stairs. <laughs> but, uh... You come stumbling down. Go ahead and make an initiative roll. Uh, I did early... Uh, let's see. I'll do another one. So I like your older one. I like it a lot better, too. Yeah, you had a 20 last time. Oh, I didn't know you rolled before. But this is official. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, the other good one doesn't count. Dang. So, from where I am, uh, with th this guy here and um, and Shaka right there, can uh, Big Fellow still throw Equa at this... Uh, Guy still? I, as long as it's an ally in front of him, yeah, that you, you can throw. All right. That is what I'll do. <laughs> Ten misses. Is that a critical fail? You have a plus nine to hit? Really? <laughs> I don't, I'm, I don't not believe you. Yeah, my thorn whip is a lot. plus six to hit. Oh, I don't have that. Actually, my battle axe is plus six. Plus, this here, a plus nine, yeah. I mean, if I don't. I don't, uh, it's doing the math, so, but, okay. <laughs> but that was a miss, sorry. 20, no, 28's not a miss. But 28 is a hit. Mm-hmm. Oh, who are you attacking, the, uh, the boss? I'm attacking, uh, yeah, Mr. Dobin. Okay, that one hits. And then, um... Sally casts uh, your repair. Oh, is that because your the hit is based on your your intelligence? I think so. Yeah, but that's why you have a plus five, plus whatever uh, proficiency. So Sally gets ten HP back. That concludes my turn. Yeah. We're not having another um, uh, little man. Nope, not at all. Incidents. No, <laughs> never again. Zizix. Right, Zizix is going to. <clears throat> He's going to cast. Thorn whip can trip at this guy. That's a miss. Okay. And then he's going to use his movement 
to run up to him and use a bonus action to bite him. And that no, use it's... okay for seven piercing damage. And that okay. the ability to use that as a bonus action is called Hungry Jaws. And if it hits, I get one temporary hit point. Huzzah. <laughs> That's how mad I am. I'm using an ability I have never used before. <laughs> I'm gonna bite you. <laughs> I'm gonna bite you. And, <laughs> and that is the end of my turn. Let's see if these guys are smart enough to attack the bears or attack you. Let's see. Let's see. This one is. Oh. Dang. Let's take a crossbow. Oh. He's going to miss, though. Is he want well if he's using range? Okay, I'm gonna say if he's using ranged while he's engaged in melee, he's gonna have disadvantage. I thought that's only if you were attacking uh, at me- someone at melee. Oh, is it? There's no reason I- why you can't shoot someone else. Well, because there's a bear clawing at you. But no, I think you're right. I think you're right. I was gonna attack the bear though. 12 hits. Takes 3 damage. Uh, troublemaker near Sal, um, Shaka is going to take out a centaur. 4 is going to miss. From behind you, Vertican. American. Um another troublemaker hears the sound of battle, comes up behind you, takes a stab at you. Nineteen. Uh hits. He takes six slashing damage. Oh, and one more. Um was gonna attack. You said six so far? Six for you, yes. This one's gonna attack Zizix. <sighs> for three piercing. Okay. Give me another constitution roll. I can. I don't want to, but I can. Come on, roll high. Woohoo! Yep. 18. I'm good. They'll stay where they are. Is is it all rolls, or is it just like once per round, or like how does that work? Um, Do you get advantage on? All, all, const- all concentration checks I get advantage on. It's right. it, in order to main, uh, yeah. I didn't know if it was like once per round or or what. So let's make sure. Uh, Shaka. All right. Um, I was probably going to hurt Sally, but uh, dear. I wanted to cast uh, Shatter um, starting from this point around here so I could get these three guys caught in the Shatter. Like, like I'm out of range, but Sally's within range. So it's... uh... Is that around you or in front of you? Like, who gets hit? It's, it's a point of my choice. Um, 
and it's a 10 foot radius sphere. And so I wanted to be like a right around where this barrel is. And all three of these guys, Dobin and the two thugs would get hit. Uh, also, unfortunately, um, Sally would too. She's in that sphere. Okay. But hopefully she, uh, if I had just healed her, so she'll be fine. So she takes out her loot, does a rock and roll on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, constitution. Thorg rolls a seven. Takes 15 thunder damage. Doesn't matter what this guy rolls, he's gonna die. Mm. Uh, no, uh, knocking out people with this spell. Dobin rolls a four. He takes a full 15. And, uh, Roll for Sally. Sally, this would be Constitution Saving Throw, right? Yep. Well, she passes, but she takes seven. Okay. Oh, oh sorry. I, I did the. Uh, I did the numbers. Um, Where'd that guy come from? Oh, he, he was behind Hurricane. Uh, I did not undo, but it moved him over there. So take a uh, seven for him, yeah. Right. Right, it's, it's the animal's turn. Alrighty. Get a drink, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> they are all going to do the exact same thing they did last time. Well, well this guy's knocked out, so he don't have to. Oh, he is? I didn't see that. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so the bears will do them first. Those are going to do the exact same thing they did last time. Oh, guy, I need you. Are they going to try and knock them out too? Yes, we are not ready to kill. No, we're trying not to, but it's not fully succeeding. Okay, so that's the first one. That's this guy. So it's a. and then the yeah, next one to his, up. okay. Then the one to his left. Well, he gets so up. Non-lethal bear biting. <laughs> Just shakes him around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They aren't real bears. They're just they're just fairies acting like bears. That's true. That's a good point. Fairy berries. Can this boar climb on the table to go that way? Or does he need to try to find a way to go around? For an animal to jump up, it's going to be difficult to jump up. Okay, so in that case... You know, he could go this... Well, he'll... he's there's a bad guy in the way, so he's going to actually just move to heal, and then these two are going to go after the guy that they're sandwiched. They're sandwiching. Ooh, okay, so one, the first one, we'll say the one that just moved, was a crit fail on his trying to tusk him, which somehow is slashing, and then the next guy got a 16 for two. Hurricane. Someone just interrupted your nap. <laughs> what was that for? I didn't do anything. Hey, it's us. Hey, guys. Hey, America. How you doing? Uh, I was better. <laughs> uh, we, it. we seem to have started a bar fight. Uh, I've decided that Varrican is grumpy, 
So rather than just an axe to the face, um, uh, where is it? Uh, the guy that just hit me is getting three blasts of this. For the glory of Corellin. Well, he would if it, all the rolls didn't suck. Oh, God. Okay, all three of them miss. It's well, you're just like up. He, he, he hasn't put his goggles on yet. <laughs> just, they just go flying everywhere. Can't see anything without my glasses. The death blossom mode, and somehow I managed to get everything but the person I hit. I aimed for. Um, that's it. Okay, Rook. I'm going to attack. I'm going to attack this guy here. Since I'm here, wait. Can I attack, then move, then attack somebody else, or is it just? Or is that not how that works? Uh. I believe you have two attacks on your action, so you cannot split them up. Okay. Does that sound right? That sounds right to me. Because your action, instead of only making one attack, now could be two attacks. You have to do, you're doing your action. Okay, then I'm going to... Well, then I want to attack this guy with my battle axe. Johnny, that's his name, right? Full hit. Uh, t- t- yeah, twelve's gonna hit. Thirteen. You'll knock him out. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to throw my javelin. Wait, at this guy. It's in front of Zizix. Sure. Do it. Yeah, it's gonna hit. Eight damage. Yep. It's looking bloody. And since I haven't moved. Going to let's see here. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna make my way over here. Wait on. Checking. So yeah, hold on. Yeah. Is right here. Yeah. And that'll be my turn. Thug next to Sally is gonna attack her. <gasps> they have pack tactics. I didn't see that. They do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does Dobin count as tag uh, part of the pack? What's that? Does Dobin count as part of the pack? Oh yeah, any, any friendly thing. Doesn't matter too much for, for what we've been doing. They're mostly a part. But uh, 18 is going to hit, right? 18 is going to hit. So she's going to take 5 bludgeoning damage. And then 24 is going to hit. Yeah. That's a crit. Mm-hmm. She's going to take seven bludgeoning damage. Sally is now at zero. She is deactivated. Oh, crap. Her, her, her glowing eyes just kind of dim out to nothing as she goes, I'm sorry, father. And then like, my heart breaks in agony. No! I've lost Final another word. child! Not again! Her final words were, I'm a good boy. <laughs> so, 24 is going to hit you. 
Zizix as this thug hits you with Yee. his face. Believe it or not, it does. It's another crit. Great. <laughs> so you take 13 bludgeoning damage. Wonderful. Come on, roll constitution. No! And balls. He's just smacked across the face. One of the slow motion things, you know, where all the... All, it's like it's just kind of waves and waves of the force. Sure. Although you have, like, scaly things, so it's not quite the same again. <laughs> but you're hit, a, few, a couple scales fall off from this, from this attack. My mom got me those scales. <laughs> they were for my mother. <laughs> my poor mother. And, um, and the animals fizzle out of existence. Well, they, one. they were my best. And you see a little, little ball of a, of a fairy magic kind of float into the Can't believe that. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. This is all Shaka's fault. <laughs> no, uh, no it is man. actually all Chaka's fault. Yeah, no, it is. It's not a joke. But Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna like this, Zizix. Okay. The thug that was uh near kinda of by himself. Takes aim with his crossbow, and as you're uh, as you're distracted, you kind of take a knee, and uh, the bolt hits directly into your back. You take seventeen piercing damage. Damn! Another crit. <laughs> you know what? It's only fair. It's only fair after all the crits yeah. I got last time. No. Yeah. Oh, you're not dead yet, you're, but you have, but you're down. I am down the big time. Man, okay, I'm feeling good as a DM. I haven't had this one in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Dobin, who's looking pretty, pretty beat up, smiles as the little robot um, deactivates. He he turns to uh, what's his what's her face Chaka. Oops, that wasn't actually the attack. So eighteen hit. Eighteen does hit. Chaka takes six slashing damage. Imagine a twelve does not hit, right? 12 does not hit. Okay. So you'll, was never, it... you'll never... I'll make sure you never love anyone ever again. Big fellow. So Zizix is down. Does that mean he has to do saving throws? Yes. Unless he gets a heal. Uh... You can do a heal, a healing potion, or do a stabilizing check, which will uh, give him a, a saving throw pip from when I remember the rules. So I go here, I'm going to do Spare the Dying. Okay. Nice. That brings me to one hit point, is that right? Or is it just stabilize? Uh, I, th I think you have to have one hit point. Doesn't say it, but you can't have zero hit points if he's stable. Uh, no. Base. Okay. What I think, what I interpret this one to mean is that it's almost it's it's just as if I had gotten three death saves successes, which is still zero hit points. But but I don't have to do death saves. I think. Yeah, uh, it doesn't I, actually 
give you hit points. It just keep, it just stabilizes you. Yep. So, um, it, like you, um, uh, like you didn't lo- uh, fail any. Yeah, that's good okay. because I'm I'm always scared of death saves because a crit fail is worth. Yeah, too. Keep, because like we, I don't think I've actually had a player like succeed three in a row, so he always gets healed <laughs> or whatever. But um, okay, you're you're now stable. Nice. And I, I don't have a Sally anymore, so thus concludes my turn. So, um, does that mean you're able to make actions, like, if you have zero hit points with save? No. I'm still unconscious. I'm just not having to make save, okay. death and save. Yeah, so He's got a pull through. Yeah. A strong, a strong, steady pulse. For a split second, you were, you were dead. <laughs> yes. Hurricane, he tries to stab you again, but this is Troublemaker's going to stab at Shaka, and she's going to take three slashing damage. Shaka, your turn. All right. Um... Shaka is going to, uh, like, uh, slash at that guy with Dragon's Bane. He is, yeah, he's almost dead. I'm gonna, should we try to, like, uh, knock, knock him out like the other guys, or should I try to kill? Well, uh, decide which, because that is a killing, that is a killing blow. Alright, I am going to... I guess I'll knock him out like the others. Okay. The rest of the room takes notice. Well, I'm sorry. I did, I did, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, bonus action. I'm going to use Mantle of Inspiration to uh, give te- eight temporary hit points to four creatures of my choosing. Uh, one will be to Zizix. Okay. Uh, one will be to uh, Maruk. Uh, one will be towards, I guess, Big Fellow, and one will be towards Varrican. So I get one temporary hit point. You get you get eight temporary hit points. Eight. Oh. So and I don't think he can do it to to Sally. I can't. She is gone. I think, yeah. But uh, as um as the boss gets knocked out. The remaining people kind of take notice, and they they see that their uh, boss has been knocked out. It looks like they're not quite sure what to do now. The bird cans your, your turn. Um. Uh, I'm not that noticeable, so I mean, I'll pay for what exactly is going on. So I am going to smack the guy in front of me with my battle axe. Hopefully, it hits better than lasers. Hooray! You try to, like for five feet away, trying to blast the sky with <laughs> with fire lasers. Each one of them, <laughs> and you missed. I had something in my eyes. Yeah. You had nothing on your eyes. That was the issue. Ooh. Eleven did. I am not pulling punches, because I don't know where it's supposed to be saving these people. <laughs> yeah, this guy kind of lowers his, his uh, sword. Vertican just goes, looks like, what's going on? And then just rams a hammer into his face. Axe. And he... Axe, yeah. But, oh, I thought you had a hammer. But okay, yeah. An axe. He's like, oh, my face! <laughs> he only has one hit points, but he's... He's basically, like, dying on the floor. <laughs> uh, I am also going to cast Mass Healing Word. 
and I'll give a measly four hit points to everybody. Hey, that's enough for me to come alive. It's alive, alive. Rook. Will you attempt to calm the situation? I would say, I would go, oh, yes, I'm going to roll a, I'm going to say, guys, I think the, I think it's time we stop fighting. Your boss is down. Most of your friends are down. I think it's time for just to, for everybody to calm down and we just talk this through. Give me persuasion. Check. Or no, oh, check. Give me persuasion roll. Oh, hell no. <laughs> well. It did not work. It does your action. If you. You can still move, but that is, that is your action. I just. I look at everybody sitting there, and then I just go up to the bar and sit down. I mean, like. <sighs> <sighs> The barmaid, like, what? or barkeeper. Bar, barkeep, whiskey. Oh, it was, a, it was a good attempt. It was a good try. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> All that dwarven accent. <laughs> hey, wow. I think mean, that's... That was just the worst roll. And Maruk, you see an arrow just kind of hit the hit the bar table next to you. Oh, come on! Uh... 13, 13, 18. Uh, big fellow, this slug takes its mace with a uh, 18. I cast shield. He misses. Okay. He does miss. Big fellow, your turn. Right. Um. There's only like two guys, well, three guys left left alive, or not knocked out. And Maruk did well, not <laughs> convince them to lay down their their arms. There's four of them. There's one in front of Shaka, one by Sally's corpse, and then these two in front of us. Oh yeah, this guy. Sorry, I didn't attack with him. Uh, are you going to move with that guy right now or what I did I moved him close to Shaka alright Shaka takes 8 bludgeoning damage she what she takes 8 bludgeoning damage alright So a big fellow uh, tosses equal at this guy. Okay. Looking very hurt. All right. And he casts equal again. Not this side. This was a, a non-lethal equal to the uh, to the head. Like he throws it backwards. Okay. Has eight temporary hit points. Guess you are stable now, so you can attack. Yep, yep. So I am going to. I'm going to cast cure wounds on myself. <laughs> Four, 
11. Um, and then, let's see, can I do anything else? Bonus let's do the, we're still recording, but uh, Craig stopped recording. I know this other one kind of uh, missed something. It's fine. Though. Yeah, I saw the other one ended up leaving uh, around, around 10 o'clock or so, and I, I jumped in to record uh, uh, on my end just in case uh, it stopped. Okay. Okay. You should have everything in, in, in the end. And that is all I'm going to be doing on my turn. I did not I probably heal. would have, like, wild-shaped. For so only two dudes thing. left? Yeah, well. That'd be a wasteful wild shape. With this troublemaker seeing guys die all around him, get knocked out. <laughs> He's gonna... Retreat outside. Attack of opportunity. No, nah, he's doing a what what disengage. It's called, a disengage. So they're essentially out of combat now. Shaka. Right. Um. Shaka goes up to these two. It, it stands at the table and is like, "Please, please, please, my friends, let us put down our." Put down your weapons. We've destroyed your... We've taken out your leader. You must now bow to us and the mighty King Zizix. And uh, and you must... And you must acknowledge his, his superiority in all matters. Give me a persuasion check. Fifteen. So uh these these two look around and just see uh they're the only two left and they put up their hands. Friends, shall we send them on their way to do good deeds throughout the land? Or shall we uh take them all to the authorities until their tab is fully paid? Well, I think their tab is fully paid from yeah. <laughs> I I think that that we need to encourage them to continue on their way and that the contract with this town is done. Right. Yes, what King Zizek said, you have concluded your business with this town, your entire group. Do you understand us? One of us goes, well, I ain't the one in charge. Well, I am, and you're leaving. All hail, kings of the... Tw- <laughs> Don't tell me twice. <laughs> and they run out the door. Huzzah! Attacks of opportunity. <laughs> Come on. I try to trip one. I know, I know. Disengage. <laughs> no. One falls. Right yes. Yes. Oh. Ah. Trip with you trip Keep moving. Keep moving. Okay, yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, my king. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do with these guys that are knocked out? And Maybe we need to kind of heal up that guy that's bleeding out over there. Let's add them to the pile. and Maybe they'll wake up thinking they just got drunk. <laughs> they know that we're not going to put up with them anymore but um, we need to make sure that there's something in place when we leave <laughs> maybe tie him with some rope and once again as I said maybe heal up this guy since he's not so he doesn't like die I mean one yeah, you're death. able to stabilize everyone except for the guy that the guys that are dead yeah, so for the guys who are dead, they're kind of dead. <laughs> and then we got to figure out what to do about Sally. No, big fellow cat's mending on Sally. She's back to normal. Woo! 
even when they're at zero, it doesn't. I think if it's destroyed, then you have to wait till a long run. Build her. All right, so just keep Sally in a sack. <laughs> the sad Sally sack. I think that. Yeah. I think the that's. Sad, I think sad. that's the rules with with them. Unless I'm mistaken, but regardless, yeah, she'll be okay. The sad Sally sack stay shall be short. Holy crap, I can't believe I got that out. <laughs> I loved it. Our tender does go. Well, I think that that does deserve a free drink or two. And she puts uh she puts five um things of ale on the counter. Here, here. I I gonna loot through the bodies to try and find money i know that i i don't remember if every single person emptied out their pockets or not but i want to look rifle through the peoples that didn't and whatever money i find put on the bar yeah you find uh they already put a lot of their their money Mm -hmm. for the performance but Mm -hmm. there's a few extra silver wonderful you put on the bar so, and, um, as you as you search through um, Durbin's um, pockets, you find a, a rolled up map. Ooh. Dobin or Durbin? What's his name? It's a uh, Dobin. What did, okay, Dobin Nore. Awesome. I. I found a map. Mm. I, I, so, I want to unroll that as I sit down at the bar and take a look. You just hear him kind of murmur and goes, hey, that's not yours. And he kind of passes it out of you. I'm going to assume that it might be indicating somewhere around Ice Spire Peak. You are exactly right. Hmm. It's a map similar to what you you found up up in the uh, in the commander's rooms, but this one has a circle covering a roughly the same area that is on your own map of mm-hmm. where you think the keep is, and uh, it has some writing on the back of it, and what is and it, it says something. It says, uh, Durbin, as we search for the keep, we leave the Reavers in your hands. Keep them in check, but we know that's not going to happen. I even knew it. Durbin, why do you have a letter addressed to someone else? <laughs> <laughs> even they don't respect him enough to get his name right. <laughs> oh, I see. Did I, did I say it wrong? It, yeah, you did Durbin yeah. again. It's okay. I'm just making Durbin. But you know what? That 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 would be that would be perfect right. if they get their name they didn't get this name wrong. Yeah, the but commander. Name's Durbin. <laughs> but he goes, um, don't be surprised of a dragon attack within the week. Oh. Are, do they think that they can control Cryovane? I don't think they. I don't think they're trying to control it. If anything, I don't think they care about the dragon at all. But they. But if any, the way they've been acting, or the way they've been, the way the other reavers have been treating themselves, mm-hmm. I suspect yeah. they're not after the. I do not. I suspect that they're not after the dragon, but they're after what the dragon has. I direct that to Dobin. What's the what business? What what did well, you Dobin. want with the? Oh, did, is he? He's not. He's, 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 he's talking to me. Is he unconscious? You like wake him up as you? Our, ask him no, not yet. Finally, I, I talked to him in his dreams. Yeah. Ooh, 
Okay. Oh, uh, Sarah's going to be mad that she missed that. She's always trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll make it even funnier. Yeah. I want to know if he knows what, what their what their end game is. So uh, Sh- Sh- Shaka's going to uh, try to in- incept him. Mm-hmm. Um, places her hand on his forehead, closes her eyes, and uh, she finds himself herself in the bar, the same bar. Um, and you see, uh, you see, uh, Dobin is the only. There's, there's two people in the bar. It's a Dobin, and there's a Shaka playing a lute, singing her song directly to him. Mm. And he's uh, sipping his um, he's sipping his whiskey as he watches. Shaka's flatter. But, that's what he dreams of. But then Dream Shaka like kind of appears behind him. Or, or like real life, Shaka comes in behind, behind him. He kind of witnesses this. You've made my eyes a bit smaller, my ears bigger. Oh, you're still perfect. Uh, tell me, Dobin. Tell me the secrets of your of your crew. Do you what endgame do you seek with the dragon? He's kind of like dreamily, just kind of watching the the dream shock up perform, and he goes, "No, they don't tell me much. Not part of the inner circle. I do know." The plan was to never protect Phandalin. But make an example of it. And is that all you know? I know that. He's like, kind of gets a sudden realization that he might be telling you secrets. But he's still kind of enthralled by uh by the dance. I know that the boss doesn't want Cry being dead. Uh, Shaka grabs him by his dream collar and brings him in for a big old smooch on the lips. She's like, "Tell me more, big guy." nothing more terrifying than a dragon, wouldn't you say? Dragons are pretty scary. How could uh, someone like your boss uh, count on a dragon to, uh, to to carry out their will? Um, at this point, give me a persuasion check with advantage. Well, let's just say dragons don't like steel. (laughs) Oh boy! Look at you. See you. See this. You see this look on my face. Mm. It's the look of shock. Kiss me again. All right. uh, She plants a uh, even bigger kiss on his lips. This time with tongue. Mm. Okay. See the one time, Ow. the one time Sarah's getting action, or Shaka's getting action. Sarah's <laughs> right here, and I have to, and, and I have to RP kissing with Chris Bo. <laughs> <laughs> and you know she'd be all for it. Yep. Yeah. And then the other Shaka comes and gives him a kiss. And she goes, "You want to get freaky?" No. 
And okay. Three, whoa, 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 whoa. Shaka <laughs> says, yes, please. <laughs> Shaka, please stop telling us what's going on in this dream. I think, we, I think we've got enough. It. Thank you. Yeah, you, you can have your fun. Just leave us out of it. Cross, like cross fades into the real world. <laughs> yeah. She goes, oh, this will be new. <laughs> and uh, she kind of leaves the rest to herself. Okay. Um. So Shaka relays the uh, information she got from the dream world um, to everyone. It's like, they plan on probably angering Cryovane by stealing from him and uh, maybe stashing the gold uh, in or to the treasure in, like, uh, places that they want to destroy. Wow. It's like I said, hmm, I wonder. This is, that's almost exactly what I said would happen. I wonder. Yeah. It, so, yeah, it all checks out. They're going to try and steal from a dragon, because, you know, apparently, apparently they want eight. They can't think of a faster way to suicide. Well, they might not be in the Recon town when one, gets here. I'm going to break on one more thing to what he said. He goes, uh, people are a lot more willing to give up their freedoms if they think they're in danger. Oh, yeah, that old argument. But, um, let's say you're able to... I mean, you, like, what are you going to do with these guys? Well, I think they probably got the message. Yeah, I, I say we just put them in the pile, let them sleep up, let them sleep it off, and when they wake up, well, maybe you leave a note or something that says, so, "Yeah, can someone tape a note to them or staple say, one in their chest?" It says, "Leave town by order of the king." Chieftain, <laughs> aka the king. Yeah, I'm, it's starting to go to my go to Zizix's head, just yeah. a little bit. And he, and he doesn't know if he wants to stop it. Yeah. Luckily, he has friends to tell him that maybe he needs to chill out a little bit. You mean subjects? <laughs> it's. <laughs> I no. turn to Zizix, give him a look, says, no, I say friends. We are yeah, friends. Maybe, maybe like a Shaka will accept into his mind that they should all leave town. Hey, that's an idea. Yeah. Shaka does so just that and um, and then gives him another like a uh, big sloppy kiss and says, find me when uh, when this whole, all, whole thing's over. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, this is not out of it. character. No, <laughs> no, that is one hundred percent Shaka, and I'm not. And there we she are. Does real... <laughs> she does that in the in the real world, not the. <laughs> so that's <what> <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. So you leave a note. You enjoy your uh, free round, and uh, you make your way outside. It just says uh, the sun's starting to set, and there we are. I think that's a good place to end it. I agree. It does sound like a, a good place. What, was, what an interesting night it's been. Have you still got a quest for the bulletin board? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so make sure you add that hundred gold, uh, Chris, to the um to your uh group money or whatever. To the honest box? Uh, it's been a while since we've I don't know if you've been splitting the money up or but um if you guys want to start preparing like see if you can get cold resist potions or something. Yeah, I was about to say that's something we need, might need to look into. Yeah. Yes. Why, why would we need that? <laughs> Well, think about the, the that. Ashes and Varrican's alms box. So I think it was. 
So you think about that uh, for for next time. Wait, I I know. Uh, if I cast fireball on us, then we won't get cold. Good point. Good point. That seven intelligence really paying off now. <laughs> Give you a hint, though. Resistance potion is not going to be cheap. Yeah. Mm. That well, was satisfying nice. to beat up some to take care of some reavers. That's that's been a long time coming, I think. Yeah, that's fun. Um, I wanted to get my combat going. Sorry if it seemed annoying. What's that? Sorry, sorry if it seemed annoying when I was trying, like what I was doing earlier. I just wanted to, I wanted to get some sort of a conflict going. Oh, <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, it's fun. Um, I, yeah, like a few weeks ago when you were souping around. And it's like, yeah, maybe we should take care of these guys. I was thinking to myself, okay, uh, I should probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, it worked out. It was. It even had an air of danger to it as I died a little bit. Uh, anyways, I no, got to no, hit no. up. I really do oh, have yeah. to hit out. So it's been fun. All right. See ya. See ya. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks, Joey. I appreciate it. Bye.